who am I? <laughs> um, my name is Kirby Dick. I'm an American documentary film director. I've made nine feature documentaries, been working for the last 25 years, all independent films, um, on a kind of a wide range of subject matter. Well, this film is not yet rated, is about the American film rating system, which is um, um, owned and controlled by the Motion Picture Association of America, which is the uh, trade organization um, for the six major film studios. And uh, so it, th and, and the ratings board that they've set up <coughs> is a, a ratings board of nine people, or I think it's actually more, it's like uh, 10, 12 people. But uh, it's completely secretive process. I mean, you don't, no, it's not open, you don't know who the raiders are, and they've kept it that way for about 45 years or so. And the reason for that is the, the, the ratings board not only rates the MPAA films, the studio films, but it also rates independent films and foreign films. And because the uh, MPAA, the studios control this rating system, they can rate their films more favorably and they can rate other films, which are really their competition, less favorably. Uh, so it's been a perfect setup for them, and everybody has sort of accepted it in the U.S. Um, but what I did is I, uh, you know, as, as an American filmmaker, independent filmmaker who lives in Los Angeles, who sort of chafes at the studios being my neighbors, I finally felt that, you know, I was going to take them on, and I hired a private investigator to find out who these raiders were. Now, major news organizations like ABC News, Nightline, NBC had tried to find out who these raiders were for the, over the last 45 years and been unsuccessful, but my little private investigator who I followed with a camera actually was able to find out, you know, who these people were. And, uh, and, and then after that, I, I put, uh, you know, that, I interviewed a lot of filmmakers talking about the process, put that together, and then submitted it to their, the, to the ratings board. And they had no idea it was coming in, so that was a, a real surprise for them. This is, I think, one of the first attacks in film on, on the actual mainstream U.S. film industry. And I think it's kind of dented it. I mean, it's not very significant. I don't want to overblow it. But, but it has, a, you know, there's a generation of people in their 20s and 30s, a, 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 a portion of that generation has seen this film. And I think they will be suspicious of the industry for the rest of their lives. And that was one of the, in, one, one of the intents of it. I really don't know the music industry very well, but in many ways it seems like it has really opened up the music industry by, by really the, the, and I mean there was even a, 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 a more of a monopoly in some ways in the music industry than there was in the film industry and, and that has been shaken quite a bit by the, by the internet. Um, so I think maybe there's a possibility of that in film. Um, I mean film is, uh, is obviously it's, it's much more complex to put it together a film than it is to put together a song or a you know, a band or an album, uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's, but even then, I mean, um, you know, the music industry was just an unbelievably stupid the way they handled it, and I, the, 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 the film industry has, is, is not, I think it's much sharper, so I, I think, I think, I, I don't think we should just assume that the internet will uh, just sort of, you know, topple this monopoly. I think that, that uh, the, the, uh, the studios may, I mean, they're, they're, you know, because there's, there's, they're a part of larger conglomerates that own elements of the internet and the delivery system, I, I think that they may be very successful in keeping their monopoly. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I think my, you know, film should be shown anywhere. I mean, I, I've always been opposed to the idea that, that you know, showing films in a theater was this sort of, you know, uh, the only way to see a film, and it was this, you know, it was sort of sacred, almost church-like experience. I, I, to me, I completely rejected that. I mean, when colorization came through, and the, you know, Directors Guild of America was, you know, just pompously saying, oh, we can't have our films. I, I, I saw no problem with that. I mean, I, th I think art is made to be remade in, in, any, in, in, in any and all different ways. Now, I don't necessarily want to see the film colorized, and there's certainly some downsides, but it's not because this is, art is some sort of precious religious form that can't be adjusted. I mean, it's absurd that the DGA in front, of, at least in the U.S., in front of uh, a DVD, you know, says this, uh, you know, this film has been altered, uh, you know, to fit your television or whatever. I mean, of course it has been. Um, uh, but then again, again, the DGA is really v very much a part of 
management of you know rather it's not it, the DGA as a as a as a guild has always aligned itself closer to the studios than it has to the other guilds or unions. Well, th this film is not yet rated. Um, did oh, well, first of all, it premiered at Sundance, and it would it probably got more press there than than any other film, including dramatic films with budgets you know t fifty times its size, uh, which was. You know, and then it went into theatrical distribution. It did okay, not great. But then when it went to DVD, it did phenomenally well because a lot of reasons. One, there'd been a lot of publicity. Two, it's about sex. Three, it's a comedy. And also, then it really, it really flourished uh, in uh, in illegal downloads. In fact, I think that's where a lot the audience has been the greatest for it. And I mean, I'm a person who thinks, you know, um, I'm I'm certainly not anti-piracy. I mean, I think it's actually for, for artists working outside the mainstream in any way, piracy is a positive thing, not a negative thing. And so I completely embrace that. Um, but yeah, it's, in fact, you know, there, it was interesting. Uh, I, it, there was a period when the, when the film uh, was actually up there with major studio releases in terms of the amount, of the, the amount that it was being pirated. So I was a very lucky guy. There's no question that, that um, you know, with YouTube, with DVD, um, uh, now with the internet, that, that uh, people growing up are much more capable and, and sort of fluent in, in the moving image. And, and they're, that's why, why first time filmmakers, films, both, you know, dramatic and documentary, are technically and much better than they were 20 years ago. I mean, it's just, I mean, you look at first time documentary filmmakers, and, and in some ways they can make films they can at least technically, not so much editorially, but in terms of the production side, make films sometimes better than I can. Um, but and so so because uh, you know people grow up in this environment where they're so fluid with this medium, they're able to, to use it in ways that that really do approach writing the same kind of fluidity that someone grows up and is able to write. And so I, I think that's a that's an interesting parallel. Yeah. Um, now, how specifically, you know, that will be, I mean, how that will be, that's sort of the, 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 the capability of, 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 of people growing up in today, but how they will, uh, how the medium will change as a result of it, I'm not, I'm not sure. One of the things that's really great about, you know, these small cameras is that people can start making films much earlier in the process. They can start shooting as soon as they realize that they have a, uh, they have an idea or they see, they see a subject that's doing something interesting. They can start shooting that. And you'll, you see that often in films is that the, that the if it's, you know, an, an arc that's, um, uh, you know, it develops over time, sometimes the first five or ten, even fifteen minutes are shot on a much more inexpensive camera. Um, but, but because of that, it creates a much more significant arc, which actually gives more weight to the film. Um, so I, I, I think that's one, one thing. Secondly, I mean, you can, you know, these little, these little cameras allow people who otherwise might not have the money to make a film. And, and it's never, ever, ever been an issue. The quality of an image in documentary has never been significant, even though people have been trained to think it is. I mean, I, you know, I had this situation where my first film I made on video, and I just didn't have enough money to make it on a high-quality video. So I do, even making it on video and transferring it to film, people said, you know, that, that, that will never, that will never, be viable, you know. It'll never be released theatrically. But I couldn't even afford decent quality video. I had to go a step down, and I just said, you know, look, you know, this is about people going through this sort of sex therapy. I think that's going to be more interesting than whether, you know, the amount of resolution on the, you know. And sure enough, I mean, it's it's never ever 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 been an issue the the image quality in in a film. It's it's something that I think. I mean, people should pay attention to it, but people should never let the quality of what they're shooting stop them from shooting, ever.